The $2,500 EOS R6 II is an important camera, not just because it's a key rival to Sony's a7 IV. It also gives Canon a chance to rectify the overheating flaws on the otherwise excellent EOS R6, released less than two years ago. It comes with a new 24 megapixel sensor, up over the 20 megapixel sensor of the last model. Other improvements include faster shooting speeds and improved 4K video specs. The competition is getting tighter in this category though. Along with the a7 IV, Panasonic just released the $2,000 Lumix S5 II, its first camera with phase detect autofocus. I saw the R6 II earlier in San Diego in prototype form, but have now got my hands on the final version. Can it keep up with the competition and are the heating issues sorted out? Let's dive in and find out. The R62's design is fairly boring, but I like it. The grip is big, comfortable, and tacky, giving you a sure hold with no discomfort even after hours of use. And the controls are well placed, whether shooting video or photos. There are a few welcome additions over the R6. The power switch is now at the right, allowing for easier access. It also has a lock that makes it hard to accidentally change specified controls. You can keep video and photos separate via a new dedicated switch. Flipping it changes all the settings for each function. Otherwise, menus, buttons, and the front and rear dials are the same as before, free of past gimmicks like a touch bar. You get a 1.62 million dot flip-out display and 3.67 million dot electronic viewfinder matching the a7 IV. Unlike that model though, it uses dual UHS-2 card slots with no CF Express. It has the same battery, but endurance is up significantly from 510 shots max on the R6 to 760 on the R6 II. I've taken well over 2,000 shots in a day with one battery and shot video for nearly two hours. It has microphone and headphone ports as you'd expect. There's a fragile micro instead of a full HDMI port, which is unfortunate considering the raw video output. In terms of connectivity, you can run the camera using the USB-C power delivery feature, and you can use it directly as a PC or Mac webcam via a new plug and play feature. As I observed in San Diego, the R6 is fast. Mechanical speeds remain the same at 12 frames per second with AF enabled, a bit quicker than the a7 IV. However, it can now shoot in electronic mode at up to 40 frames per second, making it the sportiest camera in this category by far. Shooting bursts in electronic mode does impact the buffer though. You can get about 75 compressed RAW and JPEG frames before it fills, and fewer with uncompressed RAW. With the mechanical shutter, you can shoot around 1000 compressed RAW and JPEG frames before it stops. Rolling shutter is well controlled. I'd hesitate to use it for fast moving sports, but it's much better in that regard than the a7 IV. In regular autofocus mode, the EOS R6 II is quicker and more reliable than the R6. It can keep up with burst speeds even at 40 frames per second, missing just the odd shot. In mechanical mode, I rarely had a photo out of focus. On top of face and eyes, it can now detect people's bodies, plus animals and vehicles, including motorcycles, cars, trains, and horses. It also comes with a new auto-select mode that lets the AI choose the subject type. While it can occasionally get confused by the background, the R62 is good at locking onto human faces and eyes. It's a bit less dependable for animals and other subjects though. Tracking fast moving subjects works well, though I had to fiddle with the AF speeds. You can also touch to track, but that's a bit hit or miss depending on your subject. The new 24 megapixel sensor is the biggest improvement in this camera, offering improved image quality, better low light sensitivity and more. Images are of course sharper, but overall quality has also improved with a bit more dynamic range than before. JPEGs have good levels of detail without excessive sharpening. Color accuracy is good and skin tones more pleasing than any other cameras I've tried recently. The R62 is actually better than the original model in low light, despite the extra pixels. I had no qualms about shooting at ISO 12800, and even ISO 25600 images were okay provided I exposed correctly. 
Raw images retain extra detail, especially in shadows. That makes images easier to edit should you underexpose them. It has perhaps a bit less dynamic range than Sony or Nikon full-frame cameras, but it's still very good. The EOS R6 II offers super-sampled full-frame 4K video all the way up to 60 frames per second. By contrast, the a7 IV and S5 II both crop 60p video. 10-bit quality is available in C-Log3 mode, though it would be nice to have it in regular modes as well. All resolutions are available with a 1.6x crop mode with just a slight loss of quality. You can do super slow-mo in 1080p at up to 180 frames per second, though the footage is barely usable. It's more acceptable at 120 frames per second, which still lets you slow the action way down. And finally, you can export up to 6K in ProRes RAW to an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus recorder. With the original R6, heating issues were a showstopper for many. You could shoot no more than 40 minutes of video at 4K 30 frames per second, or 30 minutes at 60p. On top of that, you had to wait at least 10 minutes for it to cool down, and then you could only shoot for another 10 minutes or so. Fortunately, those problems are largely gone. I shot a super sampled 4K 30p video for nearly two hours until the battery died with no heating issues. In 60p super sampled mode, it stopped at around 40 minutes, but it was back again more quickly and able to shoot for a longer time. If you start and stop 4K 60p capture, there are no problems. If you really need continuous 4K 60p video, get another camera, but otherwise overheating issues are largely gone. Quality is excellent with sharper video than rivals at 4K 60p. Dynamic range in C-Log3 mode isn't quite as good as Sony's a7 IV or the Panasonic S5 II though. Much of that is lost in shadows, so it's better to slightly over than underexpose. Low light video is good at ISOs up to 12,800. That makes it useful for things like concerts or plays. Boosting shadows beyond ISO 6400 can create noise, however. One unfortunate omission compared to Rivals is the lack of easy-to-edit intraframe codecs. That makes it pretty much mandatory to convert to ProRes or another format, as even fast editing systems don't like long gop. Canon's dual-pixel video autofocus is a strong point. With single-point autofocus for run-and-gun shooting, interviews and the like, I rarely had autofocus shots. Human face and eye tracking is incredibly reliable for video. It stays locked on the subject and keeps them in focus as they move, though Sony's a7 IV is slightly quicker. As with photos, it also offers reliable animal and vehicle tracking with the same auto mode that lets the camera's AI choose the subject type. Canon beats all rivals in rolling shutter. It's noticeably better than on the Sony a7 IV, even in fully downsampled mode. In 1.6 crop mode, it's barely detectable, even if you whip the camera around. In-body stabilization is fine for stationary handheld shots or small movements. Anything more can be jerky, even in enhanced digital IS mode. And finally, Canon has introduced a digital focus breathing feature, much like Sony has on the a7 IV. It works well, but only with a handful of lenses for now. Canon's $2,500 EOS R6 is a formidable hybrid mirrorless camera with fast shooting speeds, accurate autofocus, and strong video capabilities. The overheating issues have largely been fixed unless you really need to shoot continuous 4K 60p full frame video. Sony's $2,500 a7 IV has more resolution but slower shooting speeds, particularly in electronic mode. Rolling shutter is a more serious issue on that camera as well. On the plus side, it offers a slightly more dynamic range and autofocus that's a touch faster. Panasonic's $2,000 S5 II has slightly better video specs, but it remains to be seen if autofocus can keep up. The S5 II X, coming in May, looks like a better mirrorless camera for video, and it's less expensive at $2,200. If you shoot both photos and video equally though, I'd choose the EOS R6 II over Sony and Panasonic's models. It excels at both. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And for more on technology, check out Engadget.com.